Believe it or not, this circuit will work with the digital okay. I.O. pins of your Uno R3 board, or you can use it with the analog pins to detect the amount of water-induced contact between the grounded and sensor traces. This item can judge the water level through a series of exposed parallel wires. It just re it repeats itself now. Stitch to measure the water droplet water size. It can easily change the water size, the analog signal, and output analog value can directly be used in the program function. Then to achieve the function of water level alarm. I don't know what that means. Okay, it has low power consumption and high sensitivity. So there's our schematic. So it's just five volts VCC, and then ground is grounded, and the output of the pin, which is the middle, the middle, the output of the sensor, which is the middle pin, goes to analog zero. A nice simple schematic. Let's just confirm. Okay, so it's not the middle pin. The top pin is ground. The middle pin is VCC, and the bottom pin is going to analog zero. Let's take a look at this code. So after wiring, please open the program in the code. Okay, Boolean operators. So that's obviously you should hopefully know about that. We're just using and symbols or symbols there. It teaches us about this is a very quick copy and paste job, really. And you open the serial monitor. All right, well, let's quickly build this circuit then. I think it goes there. And then this, the sensor, like over here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there it is actually fairly solid there you go so you've got so you've got ground positive and then this one going to the analog pin and it's labeled s but that's the output okay so we can just use the same wires that we used for the previous one so white for the data Red for the supply and black for ground. So nice and simple. So white is going to go to analog zero. See there. Ground goes to ground. VCC two. Is it going to five volts or three point three just now? Five volts. There you go, and that's it. And it's actually illuminated an LED on it. Okay, let's get some water now. Okay, so I've got some water. Let's open up our code. All right, so I'm hoping for some simple code here. So it's nice and short. Got a bunch of comments uh, there, which looks like basically lo just logical stuff. And and or teaching you about and and or. If you don't know about that, I'm not. I'm not going to go into that in this video. So give it a Google. These is super easy to understand. So don't worry about this. Um. So yeah, it's just teaching you about and all, so we'll get rid of that. We're starting the um the serial monitor. So let's hit upload here. Okay, so hopefully that worked. And then now serial monitor. So currently it's not printing anything. I would I expected that it would print something. Okay, let's have a look. So all right, well, I suppose let's dive straight into the deep end. Let's put it in, see if it prints something now. Oh, nice, it does. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't work when dry. I mean, now that's obviously a little bit wet. Look at that, that's amazing. So you've got ADC zero. Level is 196 is climbing, so... 207 says that now. Now, what if I tilt the water slightly? We get a higher reading? No. So does it only print when there's a change? That's cool. I like that. That's amazing. Wow. I mean, if you just stop to think, like, how hard would it have been to you to for you to do this? You know? 15 years ago, 20 years ago. It's just crazy that people have put in this amount of work and we can just benefit benefit from it like this. All right, let me add some more water. So it's sitting at 218. Or yeah, it's gone to 240. I'm scared I'm going to wet my Arduino, to be honest. So it's at 251 right now. 262. Okay. 
doing? I mean, I'm like, I've pretty much almost covered the resistor there. Look at that. The water level's like, it's pretty much, it's fully covered the sensor now. So what's the sensor's limit? Like, if I just keep going, is it going to break? Man, okay. I should stop. Is that 284 right now? Okay, the resistors are fully submerged now. 295 it's gone to. Alright, the LED is not submerged, but the resistor is fully... fully the resi resistor and the transistor, it looks like, are fully submerged. So we're at 306 right now. You can see it's fully submerged. So fully submerged is what, like about 300? So I'm not sure what you would use this for and, you know, how... I mean, no, I know they said like rainwater and stuff like that. Um, I'm not too okay with like the knowledge of electricity and water. I don't really fully get that, which is funny because, I mean, it should just be basic physics, right? But yeah, I'm not there. So I don't know if this Arduino will work. If it gets wet, I assume not. Um, I assume I could use really long wires here. Um, I don't know what would happen if this part got wet. We've got an analog read here, and we're reading in the ADC value, ADC ID, okay? And we're storing that in a variable called value. And then interestingly, they're saying that if history value, history value is zero, okay? I set up here. So if history value is greater than the value, so if zero is greater than, you know, let's say the ADC value is free is 300 right now. And history value minus the value. So you got zero minus 300 is minus 300 is greater than 10. Um, why 10? Is that because we're saying that the maximum is 308? Oh, no, it's 328 there. ADC level. At the moment, it's saying 328. Okay. So, 0 minus 300 is... Well, it's not greater than 10, is it? It's minus 300. So, yeah, that would be true. Um, Then we've got an OR statement here, and we're saying... This is, I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna be able to follow it here. Okay, so we're saying let's ignore this bit for now. Okay, let's just go with just this part of the if statement. If zero is greater than or equal to three hundred, which it isn't, um, zero is greater than or equal to value, which is three hundred, and history value, which is z uh, zero. Minus 300 is greater than 10, which it isn't. Then serial print, right? S print F. Print buffer. I don't know what print buffer is. ADC percentage D, which is basically just printing out a variable, which is zero. Level is. Oh, okay, okay. This ADC ID we just set up here is zero. And we're just reading in this value here. So basically, you could replace this really, realistically, with just zero. And the same here. And if we wanted to move the pin up from where it is now, which is A0 to A1, you could do that as well, and that would still work. So I'll leave this for now as ADC ID. Um, but yeah, all we're saying, because we're just setting that variable there, so that's fine. Okay, so if ADC zero level is... And then I'm oh, just printing out the value. We're printing out the value. Okay. So right now, my current, the current setup with it at 300, this shouldn't have printed. But obviously, I haven't read this part of the if statement. So let's go through this part of the if statement then. And then you S print buffer. I don't know why you print the buffer. And then you make. Ah, oh, you make the history value equal to the value. So then that would be 300, right? So then now, okay, now that would be only if though it's taking place. Okay, so let's check out what this one is. So, or 
if the history value is less than the value, which in this instance it would be, so it would be 300 is 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 uh is greater than zero, and uh, the value 300 minus zero is greater than 10, which it is, then you'd print this. Okay, so this part would make it work the first time round. And then you would make history value equal to the value. So history value, which was zero, now becomes 300. Then you repeat, if 300 is greater than or equal to 300, which it isn't. And so, okay, so that whole thing is pointless then because it, it's not greater. So you can skip that. So then you've got history value is less than uh, value. So is history value less than 300? No, it's not. So you skip this and you don't print anything. So that's how it's making it so that it only prints when the value becomes more, but then it's also printed when the value becomes less, right? So if I lift this up now, it starts to print. Look at that. So how is it? Let's just wipe it. Okay, so how is it printing when it gets decreased? That's what I'd like to know. So okay, let's do this. Let's do it again. So right now it's at one hundred and forty. Okay. So if history value, which is 300, is greater than or equal to 140 now, because we've read in the value 140, is greater than or equal to 140, which is true, and history value minus value, so history value minus, okay, I got it, I get it. Let's just continue this, I understand it now. History value minus 140, which is like you know 160 is greater than 10, which it is. So you you know you don't need this this part of the statement now because that is true. Then print the value, which is 140. And so I don't think it's not gonna print if there's not a difference of at least 10 between the two of them. So I wonder if I just moved it, if I moved the sensor a tiny bit. This is some firstly, can I just say say that this logic here is some very good logic that would have taken me probably three hours <laughs> just write this logic for this if statement it's a brilliant if statement so i'm thinking now that as i put the sensor in if i just dingle it a bit around you know maybe move this thing a little bit we're not going to see a difference here if it's less than 10 but if i move it around fast look at that it prints loads very clever so you can adjust the sensitivity of your results here by changing this. So if you made this, for example, one and one, then every single change it will print. Here's some clever stuff. Clever, clever, clever stuff. Okay, so look at that. Any sort of movement of the sensor and it change, it prints. What's amazing is really realistically, yeah, you know, forget about the value. You could just say, okay, I want to be alerted every single time, you know, there's a decent change. So, for example, imagine like, you know, you had this as a rain sensor. You wanted to, I don't know, imagine you had a washing line and you had it connected to a motor and it reeled the washing back inside when it rained. If you wanted it so that as soon as it, even a little bit, rained a little bit, then you would have it set to this, right? And it would then, you could then do, for example, let me comment out uh, this bit and this bit. And then let's do serial print again. And then this time we're going to say bring clothes in. Or, you know, uh, let's do, let's do something else. Let's do clothes line motor activated. You got it? So now, when I run it, upload, every single time there's just any sort of change, you can see, look, any any little change and it's gonna print. Or for example, if you had this code, if you had code here, which turned on your turned on your motor and pulled your washing iron in, in, that would get activated straight away. But if you then set it so that, you know, you said, okay, I only want it to pull the washing line in when it's at, when it's, there's some significant rain, you know, not just, you know, it's been a drizzle for one second and then boom, a clothesline comes in. You make it 50 now. And now if I clear this output. Okay. So now 
as I move it around, you're not going to print anything. But a big movement, and there you go. So only when it's good. Let's let's print the value so we can see what happens as well. So let's, um, that's very clever. This is very, very clever stuff. Hopefully you guys understand that logic. If I dip it in, you can see here, 50 went from 50 to 104 to 155. Keep going, 206. So you can see there, it's only printing at increments of at least 50. So go all the way in, should go from 308. So from 308 and then drop right down, 206, 155. It's very clever stuff. Amazing. Uh, I don't think I need to really add anything else to this. I mean, I don't see... This is perfect code, really, as far as I'm concerned. I wouldn't change any of this. A brilliant, brilliant if statement here. You know, nothing wrong with using the analog pin there that works perfectly. But yeah, I'm okay with that. I think, that, I think that's pretty cool. I'm very happy with that. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that one. So I shall see you guys in the next one. Take care.